welcome everyone to our Wednesday Bible study and prayer time. I'm glad you can join me today. Uh, I just want to let you know that uh, we have plans in place to begin the reopening. Uh, I'm not going to announce a date right now because I'm recording on Monday, but by Wednesday of this week, when you're viewing this, we will have made a decision on that date and we'll get that information out to you. But I want to stress to you that it is a tentative date. And if our numbers get bad here in this county, uh, if something happens there, uh, extenuating circumstances that would make it less safe for us to gather, we'll push that back uh, out of concern for safety and caution on that. But we have a, a date targeted out there, and we'll be letting you know very soon. But when we do come back, uh, things will be very different for a while. Uh, we're going to ask you if you uh, are sick not to come when you're sick. If you have a fever, uh, please don't come with a fever. If you've had a fever within 48 hours, it's probably best that you not come. And we totally understand those who would want to stay at home and watch a video still because you're older or you're compromised in some way or just out of abundance of caution. So we perfectly understand that and we expect that. When we come back, we'll be wearing masks. As I started off Sunday's message this uh, past Sunday with a mask on, just so you could see, we'll be wearing masks. If you forget to bring yours, we'll have some that once we give it to you, it will be yours uh, to use. But we will require masks uh, for the service. There'll be no handshaking and no hugs. And I'm going to miss that terribly but that's just what we have to do to be safe. The maybe the worst news is there'll be no coffee and no snacks. I know everybody's groaning. Uh, I always look forward to that cup of coffee, but right now out of an abundance of caution, we cannot serve coffee or snacks. Some good news for you. Uh, the service will be a little shorter and my sermons like having done online will be a little shorter. So that's good news for you. We will be practicing social distancing as you enter the building and as you exit the building. Uh, in the sanctuary and in the fellowship hall where we sit, we'll be practicing social distancing. There'll be signs and tape, and there'll be greeters and ushers to help you understand that, to help you get to the right seat, and to uh, make sure that you are properly social distanced from others. And there'll be more guidelines that we'll share with you in the coming days and weeks as we prepare of what it will be like uh, to come back. There will only be one service on Sunday, and it will be at 11 a.m. We will not have a nursery. There will be no Sunday school, and there will be no Wednesday nights for yet a while longer. We hope to get Wednesday nights back up and going, but one step at a time. An 11 o'clock service abbreviated and we will be in the sanctuary and the fellowship hall we'll be able to live stream uh, from one room to another and we're hoping we'll be able to live stream uh, to Facebook and to YouTube by that time if we're not able to we will at least be making recordings that we can put up they may be a little delayed and not as early on Sunday but we will have that available, a virtual worship experience. I tell you folks, at the beginning of this year, the year 2020, I couldn't have imagined in my worst case scenario, the situation that we're in right now. I couldn't dream of it. Renee and I sit at the house and we talk and we ask questions like, you know, are we going to get to go on a trip again? Are we going to fly again? Are we going to feel safe getting on an airplane and going? It's hard to believe that for 11 weeks now, we've faced a pandemic that's taken over 100 souls into eternity that we know of. Some of those 
saved, many of those lost. Our nation is divided and anxiety is growing every day. We see slogans on TV, we'll get through this together. We are stronger together. And I would say it isn't exactly catching on. And now racial tension is at a high and there's more stress being added to all of our lives right now. Will it get better? And what can we do as Christians? And I would say as Christians, I want you to remember that we are citizens of the kingdom of heaven. We are to be salt and light in the world, no matter how chaotic the world may be at any given moment. In my lifetime, this has been as, as tough as it gets. In my ministry, this has been about as hard as it's ever been to, to stay focused on ministry and our mission because of all the distractions we're facing right now. But I want to ask you to lay down your politics. I want to ask you to lay down just your opinions. And like the disciples, be in one accord and to be in prayer that we might be able to demonstrate to the world that loving your neighbor is the way to healing and salvation. Not just for us, but for the whole world. Hating neighbor is antichrist. Insulting neighbor, antichrist. Avoiding neighbor is not Christianity. Love is the only cure. Love, love of God and love of neighbor. This is what we must do. There's been much sadness. I tell you, I go through episodes when I'm really feeling sorry for myself and the limitations there are and the sadness there is in my heart over lives lost, over the anger, over the inability to communicate, over people struggling, and being divided with one another. It causes a lot of sadness in my life. But I know that times like this, we have to grieve, we have to mourn, and then we have to dust ourselves off, we have to get up, and we have to serve. So I thought I would share with you today from the Psalms some passages that help me to be able to grieve. I'd like to start off with a reading from Psalm 4, and it's verses 1 and then verses 6, 7, and 8. Answer me when I call to you, O righteous, O my righteous God. Give me relief from my distress. Be merciful to me and hear my prayer. Many are asking, who can show us any good? Let the light of your face shine upon us, O Lord. You have filled my heart with greater joy than when their grain and new wine abound. I will lie down and sleep in peace for you alone, O Lord. Make me dwell in safety. And now a prayer to go with that. O righteous God, bring relief from the pain and suffering of my life. Help us to look to you, to show us good, even in the midst of bad. Let your face shine on us. Bring hope and joy to my heart once again. Allow my sleep to once again be peaceful. Let me dwell in your safety, O Lord. Amen. Another psalm that helps with grief in a brief reading, Psalm 6. Be merciful to me, Lord, for I am faint. O Lord, heal me, 
for my bones are in agony. My soul is in anguish. How long, O Lord, how long? Turn, O Lord, and deliver me. And then from Psalm 18, verse 28. You, O Lord, keep my lamp burning. My God turns my darkness into light. And I offer a prayer. Would you pray with me? O oh God, our Father, I am surrounded by the darkness of death and grief. I am unsure of my steps. The path is hidden and unknown. The journey seems endless. But you have promised to be a lamp for my feet, a light for my path. Give me the strength to keep my lamp burning. Turn my darkness into light. Both today, tomorrow, and until the end of the age, we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Be good to one another. Check on your friends. Check on your neighbors. Pray steadfastly in one accord. Be kind as you go forth into the world. I love you, God loves you, and I'll see you Sunday.